What's going on guys? It's Nick here, back with another video. We've gone over the best draft strategy from an early and a middle first round pick. So today, time to walk through what to do if you find yourself with a late first round pick this season. This can be a challenging spot to draft from, especially at times being hard to game plan for since you know you don't really know exactly what the pool of players is going to be in that range because a lot of different things can happen in the early and the middle rounds. But we're going to walk through two different scenarios in this one, similarly to what we did in the early first round video, depending on if there is wide receiver and tight end value or if there is running back values, because different things can happen in different leagues. Value here is just going to be determined by like a combination of my rankings along with ADP. And if you want access to my exact rankings for every scoring format, two wide receiver, three wide receiver leagues, two flex spot leagues, all that stuff. You can check that out at my website, thefensefootballadvice.com, and also doing a giveaway. So follow the podcast on either Apple Podcasts or on Spotify, leave a review and a rating, and then just like screenshot that and tweet it at me. Then you're going to be entered into a giveaway for all in access on the website. I'll give away three memberships at the end of a week. So this video goes out on Wednesday by the next Wednesday video. I'll pick three people to get all in access. If you've already purchased, I'll just refund you. And let's say you already purchased like Dynasty or Draft, I'll refund what you did and then I'll upgrade you to all in. So you can also enter this if you already have any of the packages. I did this last year. Way fewer people than you think are actually gonna enter this. So your chances are actually really, really high if you actually wanna do this. So again, follow the podcast. It's easy to find, Fantasy Football Advice Podcast, or you can click the link in the description. Follow that, leave a review, and leave a rating as well. Screenshot that, tweet it at me, at NickSilekFFA. That's on the screen as well. All right, so let's talk about first round picks. Uh, if you have a late first round pick, in this video, I'm going to assume, I have to assume a certain pick, I'm going to assume the 12th pick in a 12-team league, so we're going to be picking at the turn at every single round. So let's pretend we're on the clock here at pick 12 and 13. There is just like thinking in general, no matter what site you're on, because there will be differences between if you're playing on Yahoo, NFL, ESPN, Sleeper, all that stuff. But pretty much regardless of what site you're on, there is almost a 0% chance that our top five of the season of Jonathan Taylor, McCaffrey, Cooper Cup, Jefferson, and Chase are on the board. I have seen on some leagues that Jamar Chase can slip this far, but it's unlikely. And we're going to say for this video, just assume that's not going to happen. It's also pretty unlikely that Eckler is there as well. And looking at composite ADPs, there's a relatively clear top nine. After Eckler, you've got Derrick Henry, Dalvin Cook, Najee Harris. On almost all sites, that is going to round out the top nine. Probably not going to be there at pick 12 as well. So if we assume that those picks are off the board, then after that, there's this little like bubble of players who are all very similar in value and have wildly different ADPs depending on the site. If you're on ESPN, well, Devonta Adams is probably the next pick. If you're on NFL.com though, Mixon's actually supposed to be like sixth overall. And so Mixon, if he was still available, is probably next. So we're gonna take two different approaches. The first one is assuming no wide receiver value. So we're gonna assume that after those top nine, the 10, and the 11 picks both went wide receiver. Technically, Kelsey could also be off the board, but I want the ability to talk about uh, the impact of basically having a Kelsey team as well. So for this one, we're gonna say wide receivers went heavy, Adams and Diggs get taken, and so my next ranked wide receiver is C.D. Lamb, but I really wouldn't wanna take him at the turn here, so wide receiver not being an option for us. So in this scenario, uh, and remember, we have back-to-back -back picks here, 12 and 13. You can either go with Kelsey with one of these picks or double dip at running back. I think that's the most likely outcome if wide receiver was taken heavy since quarterback is not going to be an option for us. In this scenario, top running back options are DeAndre Swift, Joe Mixon, and Aaron Jones. And those are really the only ones I'd even consider taking with this pick since all of the running backs after that are more like mid-second round picks. So what do we do? My projections say to double dip at running back here, and I think that I agree. So, like, you're not going to be picking again. We have, again, late first, early second. That means we have a late third round pick 
an early fourth round pick. And while you're probably looking in that range of the trio of like Montgomery, Akers, and Etienne, like that's probably going to be there. It does depend a little bit on what site you're on, what scoring format you're in, but that's the range you're looking at. And while I'd be totally fine with those running backs, you do risk by not taking running backs here. You risk that that range is also not there. And if you miss out on that range as well, then you're in trouble. If you skipped out on running backs, you miss that range. Now you're really not looking at the position. We know it's optimal to go running back, running back. And so I would probably take the two running backs here. But beyond that, if you want to go with like Kelsey here, just know that like while the data says that first round tight ends are a no, but second round tight ends, it says it's good. The data, as we talked about in that video, it's working off of pretty much all successes. There have been very few if any, second round tight ends to bust in the past like seven years. That's what the data is based on. And so if we're looking at a very small sample of all successes, well, of course, it's going to say it's successful to draft a tight end in the second round. This is the very, very early second round. We don't really have data on what happens if Kelsey were to bust in the mid second round. Like how much does that impact your team? It's probably a lot. Uh, and I just want my like my general rule with Kelsey and Andrews this season is get him into value. If, you know, Kelsey slips into the mid-second, if Andrews slips into, like, the early third round, grab them. Those are great values. But I don't really want to be taking them at their ADP. So if there are values at running back, let's just take it. So on this team, we're going to take Joe Mixon, and we're going to take DeAndre Swift. In scenario two, we're going to assume that everyone in the league loves running back. So both of those players are gone and so that means that the top eight running backs are off the board along with the top three wide receivers again cup jefferson and chase so what will we do now do you reach on running back or do you attack the other positions in this scenario i would probably start off with adams and kelsey we by no means need to go with a full-on like rb0 draft but we have the option to do so if we need to. And I just don't see reaching for running back being sharp because even though, like I just said, I'd prefer to get Kelsey at a value. I'd prefer to RBRB. I'd prefer at least one running back first two rounds. If you were to reach at running back at this spot, you're getting worse running back value than the people right before you, worse value and worse running backs. Then you're also gifting them Adams and Kelsey. So now the people who are drafting this like 9, 10, 11 range, who you're competing with, have a better running back, great value with awesome receivers and tight ends. And you're sitting here with like, you know, maybe two running backs that aren't great values at the pick. And like, you just have a worse start than pretty much everyone in the draft. And if we're in round two and we already have a worse start than everyone else, that is not a good situation to find yourself in. And so I think you just go by the ADP. You go by, I mean, let's be honest, like Adams could still finish as the number one wide receiver of the season. Kelsey will probably finish as the number one tight end. So you're not just like tanking your team. You're taking two phenomenal picks. And we'll hope that when we get to this, you know, round three, round four range and round five, round six, we can make it up at some point with running back. So first two rounds, we're either going Mixon and Swift for one team and the other team is going with Kelsey and with Adams. In round three, Things are wildly different between our two teams. On the two running back build, we can either split running back and wide receiver. So start off three running backs, one wide receiver, or we can double dip. And now we can have two running backs and two wide receivers have a relatively even build just with more value at the running back position. Tight end is likely not an option for either team. It's definitely not an option for the team we took Kelsey on. But Pitts is probably gone in the late third round. So we're not going to be able to get him. Waller's in consideration for us, just kind of depending on who is left, I guess, at running back at wide receiver. On average, though, this is the board you're kind of going to be looking at. I'm going to show a lot for the rest of this video, just like a draft board, so you can see what in general we're looking at with each one of these picks. I kind of put in, so I allowed the system to pick these teams, but then I went back uh, I filled in the teams to make more sense, and I went off of consensus ADP. So this isn't one site's ADPs. This is a mixture of everyone. We threw in Underdog. We threw in ESPN, uh, Yahoo, NFL Sleeper, all the different sites 
This is kind of what it's looking at in general, what you're going to be deciding between. In this spot for the two running back build, I would take your favorite wide receiver between Pittman and Moore and then also take Acres. You could argue that double dipping is a little bit better and, and that would be double dipping at wide receiver. And I'd be fine with doing that, but running back is going to be very thin at your next pick and wide receiver won't be, you know, there are going to be options in all of rounds five, six, seven, eight, nine, like at wide receiver. And so I would rather just give us the possibility to double dip in other rounds and just take the one of the last remaining quality running backs we see in round three. On the Adams and Kelsey build, I would absolutely take Akers. You need to lock in that running back. And I would personally double dip also taking Etienne. Like I said, running back is going to be very, very gross soon. There are a ton of wide receivers we're going to love in the 5-6 turn. And we'd also prefer three running backs in the first five rounds. We might not be able to do it in this build, but at worst, we'd want two, right? If we prefer three, we don't want to go into round five with one or zero. So we can at least ensure that two happens for us. So in one build, we've got Mixon, Swift, Akers, and Pittman. In the other build, we have Adams, Kelsey, Akers, and Etienne. That brings us to the five, six turn. On our three running back build, I'm for sure not going running back with either pick in this range. There is a clear drop off in talent. We already have three. There's just like, there's no need. If the data says we don't even want to take running back here, if this season there's no running back value and there's great wide receivers, like it just makes too much sense to go double wide receiver here. Uh, quarterback, it's also not a great range. You're kind of reaching on this like early to mid round quarterback range. It's just, it's not a fantastic spot to take quarterback here. Uh, and then the odds of getting a top five tight end are relatively low. If Waller were to happen to fall due this pick, I do think that's a great pick, uh, but it's it's unlikely. I don't think any of the top five tight ends are going to be available here. So a very natural spot to take two wide receivers, and you should really just go with your top two projected wide receivers. There's no point in playing the ADP game when there's going to be 22 picks that go by between you and the next pick. Like, unless your next projected ADP literally has like, you know, 40 spots of ADP back, and you're like, okay, I might be able to get them at like the seven, eight turn. Like, you're not going to be able to play the ADP game here. Whoever the top two projected wide receivers are for you, even if you're reaching like, you know, half a round, two round, just do it because they're not going to be there at the next pick. And you might as well just take the top two projected. So for this example, we're going to take Marquise Brown and Mooney. On the other build, you have two options. You can take Miles Sanders. He's almost always there at this spot. I mean, most of the time he's there. Uh, and this isn't like a bad spot to get him. You'll have three running backs through five rounds, which is what we like. And you won't feel forced to reach at the seven and eight turn if there's really no quality running back value in that range, if things are looking really gross. Personally, I still think wide receiver, wide receiver is just the pick here. Like pretty much no matter what, if you have a late first round pick at the five, six turn, I am probably just going wide receiver, wide receiver. And if you want to factor that into your decision-making in rounds one through four, go for it. I just think in this range, you just basically need to assume that is probably what is going to happen. Now, you could get crazy value. An awesome running back could fall. Uh, one of the tight ends I talked about, like Waller could fall here. Pitts could fall here. Uh, maybe like, I don't know, Herbert's still available at this spot. Like something could happen. But on average, you're probably just going with two wide receivers here. Um, I know the data says that it's better to go with running back, but it's just such a better range for wide receiver that unless you're getting great value, I'm probably just taking two. So we're just going to assume we take the same two for that round. At the 7-8 turn, we probably want to go back to running back on both builds, honestly, but definitely the one that didn't start off with two running backs. But quarterback is also someone you really need to consider here. We know that the optimal range is rounds 6 through 9 for quarterback. And as you get into 10, 11, 12, like the quarterbacks are still good, but it'd be preferable to grab the last really good quarterback in those like middle rounds range. And it actually does set up really well for you to have um, that quarterback come in round eight at round nine. It's going to be the nine 12. So you're at the end of round nine. It's relatively unlikely that happens. One thing I'll say here is read the room. If 
every quarterback that comes off the board is being drafted, you know, half a round to a round after their ADP, which is going to happen in some leagues. Some leagues just don't value quarterback that high. Know that. Know, okay, quarterbacks are going later than usual. I actually might be able to use it at the nine pick here and still get one of these elite quarterbacks. If like in the draft, I'm showing you on the screen right now, you know, quarterbacks were kind of flying off the board. This is kind of in tune with ADP, maybe slightly ahead of ADP. But if that's happening, you want to try and get that last mid-range quarterback, or I don't know if I grabbed the last one, but like last, second to last. And in general, if that's happening at this 7-8 turn, the 8 pick is a really good opportunity. It doesn't really matter which one, but you know, your 8th round pick here, it's a good opportunity to kind of get the end of that range. And so for both teams, I'm going to draft Russell Wilson and then Tony Pollard, because I think one of the teams need a running back. And the other team, it was still a good spot to get him. Uh, and I don't think either team like needed a wide receiver in the spot. So Russell Wilson and Tony Pollard for both. And at that point on, once we kind of have through eight rounds, nine on, it's really just about finishing off each roster. The team with the running back, running back build has valiant running back, doesn't need to attack it super late. And probably, since they don't even have a tight end through eight rounds, probably needs to double dip. If you're going to wait until the double digit rounds to grab your tight end, you might as well just grab two of them late, two upside options that you like, because it's relatively unlikely that you're going to hit, you know, I mean, we can try and predict tight end, but it's difficult to do so. And so give yourself the best opportunity, double dip there. While the team that started with like Adams and Kelsey will obviously don't be double dipping late at tight end. And so that team, it's much more necessary for that team to like double dip honestly at running back late and take maybe two rookies, maybe take a pass catcher and like an upside play. Like just take youth, take someone who has the possibility through injury, through outperforming expectations to really outperform their ADP because you spent less capital running back and you kind of need that to hit. Overall strategy for each pick is much less important. It really just is how did you start off with each of these teams? How do you need to finish? Like I said, the team that took tight end early, well, now they need to take running back late. Teams took running back early. Well, now they need to take tight end late. Both teams took the quarterback. They don't need to. You can do two quarterbacks. But remember, our rule is probably pick one. I personally would not take two quarterbacks and two tight ends. If you only have six bench spots, you're not really leaving yourself enough room there. Um, but yeah, one of the team will double ditch a tight end. One of the teams, uh, we won't be doing that. Both teams, I'll put on the screen now how I finished off each draft. Both went Gage in nine. Both went Tony in round 10, Hines in 11. And then I just took the Rams defense in round 14, which was the final round. Always defense in the final round. So the only difference between these two teams is what I was describing. Round 12, round 13, one went running back, running back. That was the team that took Adams and Kelsey. And then one double dip to tight end, taking Cole Clement and Irv Smith. Fantasy pros liked the running back, running back build a little bit more. But my projections and scoring system gave a very similar grade, but a slight lean towards the Adams and Kelsey build, I think because I have Etienne ranked above ADP. And I think my system was giving a little bit more value to that, saying it's a little bit more okay than fantasy pros was. I think both teams are a really good template for what you could do given, you know, the late first round pick. And it's also a template, assuming you're drafting with people who are paying attention. There were zero like great values in this draft, which I can promise is going to happen in your league. They're going to be great values. It honestly only takes one to really snowball things. One person taking uh, Ted End earlier than they should, uh, taking honestly Josh Allen and Mahomes earlier than they should, just opening up value. And each time one person kind of reaches, and sometimes it's like the same person in the draft, but each time that happens, everyone kind of shifts one spot and you get to a point where you're in round six, round seven, and you're looking around two rounds ahead by the rankings because you've got really good value. So while I took Marquise Brown and Mooney in rounds five and six, because on average, that's kind of what you're going to be looking at. There's a chance you got lucky. And maybe it's Mike Williams and Sutton, or it's Sutton and Deontay Johnson, or Mooney and Allen Robinson, or maybe you got lucky with quarterback. And instead of Wilson, you can get 
hurts. Or maybe, you know, in the first round, you got super lucky, you could go Dalvin and Najee Harris at the end of the first round. There are plenty of different opportunities throughout draft for you to gain value. What I've shown you is a really good template positionally for how you can kind of build things. And from there, you can section off and say, oh, I got way better value than I thought I could get here. Maybe I can afford to take this chance here. Maybe I can afford to go with quarterback slightly earlier because I got that Dalvin Cook and Najee Harris in rounds one and two. And I'm more than willing to not go with our rule of three quarterbacks in five rounds because I feel so confident in them. So use this as a template but not something to say, oh, I'm gonna draft this exact team. Because as you can see by my grades, my grades are a little bit more um, harsh, I guess, than Fantasy Pros is. I make it more difficult for you to have a really high-end team. But this is not some like phenomenal team. It's a good strategy if things don't work out a ton. But use the rankings, things are gonna work out, especially if you're in a hometown league. So if you have a draft coming up, make sure you have access to the website well ahead of time. Uh, so you have enough time to read through all of the information. This weekend, I posted three premium videos going over most commonly asked questions. And I'm hoping that this week I'm able to also post the Superflex strategy guide as well. So check out all that information again at my website, thefancefootballadvice.com. And remember the giveaway. Go to Apple Podcasts, Spotify, follow the podcast, leave a review, leave a rating, screenshot that tweet it at me and you'll be entered in the giveaway for all in access and then i'll refund it if you already have it i'll be back tomorrow with another player breakdown probably going to be hawkinson versus goddard versus zach Ertz. friday we're working with etr to create a fade list and then saturday we're going over the biggest risers and followers in adp over the last week as per usual that my friends is the end of this one hope you all enjoy if you did have a hang the like button and have a subscribe to the channel if you're new here thanks for watching